Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, several times I've been asked, uh, like you know, someone who wants to start with the penetration test and they want to learn from the basics and scratch. So I thought this is, would be a good idea to kind of start with the architecture because this is the most essential thing you have to learn or you should know about if you want to get into the penetration test or if you want to create your security mindset. And this is not just for the uh, someone who want to get started but also like you know experts like uh, many of us would have to strengthen their basics uh, to make sure uh, they understand the basic and modern architecture of the, how applications are built so they can also think about various threats and risk uh, uh, attached to those uh, architecture. So today we're gonna uh, talk about a little bit of architecture about the web applications and we'll talk about like uh, various elements of it uh, so let's start with the uh, typical format of the application so now there are several components as you can see on the screen uh, there is uh, let's talk about the web server first now in the old scenario the web server would have uh, built on the like you know HTML and script code and then they will have some database to or flat file to store some content or information and then the LDAP server or maybe another similar mechanism would be used to kind of authenticate the user. Now this is a typical web server and then you have browser like a Firefox, Chrome or Safari to access the resources hosted on the web server. Uh, and also now nowadays we are also like you know people are using proxies and this is something uh, as a security expert you should know about what is the proxy what are the types of proxy so two types of proxy one there is a forward proxy and then the other one is the reverse proxy the forward proxy uh, it kind of controls the traffic uh, or requests coming in from the browser so whoever is making the request from the browser coming into the web server it kind of controls and then the reverse proxy does exact opposite so any uh, request that came to the web server uh, it's intended to do, go to the web server it kind of work as a load balancer or something and then it filters okay which request should go uh, which server if you have multiple uh, server in the back end or multiple database in the back so uh, it filters that and also it kind of prevents uh, most of the security attacks uh, because no one wants to open up the web server to the internet. So the proxy or the reverse proxy would be uh, the face to the internet. So someone as an attacker, they can't know what is the IP address of the web server uh, because which will be hidden behind the proxy. <coughs> also, uh, if you know about the similar terminology, uh, net so that's also uh, similar to what the proxy has been doing so this is how the uh, basic architecture uh, like you know probably a few years ago uh, now the paradigm has changed a little bit so for example you could see uh, most of the uh, applications are now like you know built on the client side rather than just on the server side like server side would be HTML script code but now it's also on the client side and there is also some level of client side storage as well rather than going to the server side all the time so that that that's a little bit uh, changed in the modern ac application architecture and that's something uh, when you are doing a threat analysis or when you are assessing any application you need to make sure what is the architecture of the framework that the application is using so similarly there are uh, of course you have, must have heard the term model view and controller model is something that defines a data structure view is the ui or graphical user interface and the controller is the pure business logic so that's how uh, i guess uh, there are several frameworks out there uh, it provides you the standard directory structures like where you should store all the uh, public images and icons and graphics where you should store your business logic it, it gives you the entire directory structure how you should build the application in the example of uh, it would be like you know angular and .NET so that's how the model view and controller works now uh, recent past you would also see an extra layer which is a service layer uh, 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 along with the model view and architecture or a model view and controller now the service layer is sort of uh, uh, divided into two 
uh, subcategory one is the soap uh, and the other one is the rest api now soap is sort of like a procedural uh, xml based uh, calls where one would invoke to get some data uh, I have not seen like I have seen soap being used probably five six years ago a lot nowadays uh, uh, rest apis are more of favored for any application uh, they would you would generally use like you know the rest apis uh, which is uh, in the json json format and uh, it will make a call and you will get the response and you can also expose these rest apis to third party uh, so you can also use uh, like you know third party apis to consume some resources rather than building your own and and the it allows a lot of flexibility and that's why uh, rest apis is gaining more and more popularity and recently OWASP has came up with the api top 10 risk of course it applies to soap and rest both but uh, more of it applies rest than the soap so that's a new service layer which has been added in the recent past uh, along with the model view and controller so that's something also you need to uh, think about now while we talk about the architecture and framework we also need to talk about a little bit about the protocol now this is simple like http which is stateless so uh, and uh, who makes the http request that's a browser and that's our client so whenever a client makes a request to the server it's stateless and what it means is it does not have knowledge of the previous request that was made so if the browser makes the two requests the second request will be totally independent of the first request and that's why uh, application has to maintain a state in some way and that's why it be used the cookie uh, or bearer token or, or whatever form of token that they want to use to authenticate the user on every request so they don't have to ask user credentials every time so th that's why uh, like you know uh, it's a, a stateless protocol and in the url along with the host name or the domain name you will also mention the port so http for example would be 80 https would be 443 or you can also override the port or uh, if you do not want to expose or if you have multiple uh, SSL uh, ports open then you can also like you know use 8443 or any other random port that you would like now now before moving forward let's uh, jump on to our Wireshark and I want to show you uh, uh, like you know how the uh, maybe handshake or how the typical connection works so uh, i just captured few requests uh, from my browser uh, just accessing one of the uh, demo site and as you can see uh, the handshake always uh, is like you know three way handshake so first uh, the client will say client hello and the server would say yeah, hello and ac acknowledgement packet something like this and then the client will acknowledge the request now as you can see here these are the port numbers so of course every time when you're trying to connect some uh, some site your browser the browser will use the any available port now in this example since I was trying to access uh, an application on port 80 which you can see here so this is running on port 80 there is no HTTPS here right so that's why and the browser uh, selected the port 56884 which was free uh, like you know when the connection was made so that's why uh, it uses that port and here you can uh, see so much detail like you want to learn about the connection and how how it's done and or the ethernet port what are the uh, you can also do something like uh, follow tcp stream so you can uh, see all the requests and response going through for each of this request uh, you can do it here but of course like you know since this was on 80 port you can see all these details into the clear text if it would have been the HTTPS SSL uh, this would have been all encrypted and you would not be able to see all this detail uh, but generally uh, in any case I like to use burp uh, to see the raw request and response because it's much easier to see and understand now as you can see the first request that it would send uh, would be like you know get 
request and uh, that's a uh, directory of the whatever the application which is hosted on the web server now there are so many requests out there now if you see here let's go back to our presentation so these are the several uh, request methods available and you will come across uh, many of these during your pen test uh, get uh, does not have any message body so it just sends the data in the query string so we always recommend that do not send any insensitive information to the query string because it's possible that you can someone can uh, perform in the middle attack someone can shoulder surf or it's stored into browser history so anyone can retire there are so many examples why not to do that now the head request of course as the name suggests it will just be a like you know head without any content to it or without any body to it so that's why it's a head request uh, these are hardly used nowadays but sometimes it left open uh, without any reasons and it could lead to a security concern uh, you can look it up like you know one of the github uh, uh, security vulnerability which was exposed earlier this year like I guess in June or July this summer and that was due to the head request uh, post request uh, is the most famous for any methods and data you want to transfer you will use the post request and also uh, give much more details and like you know you in the request body you will provide all the parameters and its value trace is mostly used for troubleshooting options you can see uh, what are, which are the methods enabled at the web server connect some time you want to connect using the proxy then you will use the connect put and delete are somewhat debatable and uh, has so many security risks that's why it's mostly uh, disabled by the web server administrator now other thing that you see in the request the host is the of course the domain that we are trying to access user agent is from where we are trying to access since I was using Mozilla Firefox then accept is uh, what type of uh, data does it accept or uh, it's a text and HTML uh, so that's what it says accept language encoding what's the encoding techniques that been used connection uh, it's closed so because it's a stateless so it sends the request get the response and then connection is closed uh, and then the cache control and upgrade insecure request so cache control is mostly around if you want to cache something to the browser so you do not want a client to go to the web server every time to search for the request so that's what it's an optional header so uh, but of course again you do not want to cache any sensitive information because somebody can grab your system and uh, uh, retrieve all those information that's why the cache control uh, feature is given and one of the uh, required header by the security professionals and now if you see the response uh, so here you can see HTV 1.1 although it's very I would say uh, this is optional like 1.1 because it's very default but uh, the uh, focus here is 200 okay so this is one of the response method now there are so many response codes out there a lot apart from the 200 okay so if you if we go back here and see here so 200 okay there's if you get 400 that means there's a bad request something is wrong with your request parameter uh, 401 unauthorized so you have given the credentials but you're not authorized our web server doesn't think that you are authorized so that's why you get the 401 unauthorized request response 403 access forbidden now you are authorized but then the resource that you are accessing is not allowed so that's why your access is like you know forbidden or something 404 not found is very common like uh, you're requesting a direct uh, particular page but it, which does not exist on the web server now apart from this you might also encounter 500 which is sort of like internal server error message uh, which will uh, like you know if the server encounters any error exception then it will throw that response to you so that's again uh, one of the response message that you would see and then uh, here uh, it says like you know the date of the response server so this is the backend server uh, in the first slide that we saw what is the web server that it's using so here it gives you the detail now best practice is not to show this information because someone could uh, enumerate all the vulnerabilities related to so and so version that you are using and exploit the web server 
and the content length so this is how uh, like you know the client or the browser would validate uh, like how, what is the content length is like length of this response body uh, and and that's what browser really look into uh, when it receives the response and then again connection is closed because the response was sent and then what was the content type text and html now as we were talking about the rest api this would be not text html it would be a json or xml for the soap and uh, likewise uh, so whatever the request was sent so that will make client understand uh, how to interpret the response and that's why uh, the response call is sent so this is how typical and uh, many times when you are going for the interviews and uh, I guess one of the basic questions that one would ask and I think it should ask to understand whether the person have basic knowledge of how the HTTP works or how the HTTP S works so and how the handshake works uh, and all those things because these are really really essential things to understand if you really want to get into the penetration test uh, uh, because otherwise if you do not know uh, meaning of all these headers information request methods response codes and uh, how the architecture is laid out uh, what frameworks the application is using uh, if they're using rest apis how they're using how they're exposing are they using third party how they're doing authentication and all those things this is very very important before even you start digging into uh, as a pen tester so that's why I thought uh, maybe this is a good uh, lesson for everyone to learn and probably just brush up our skills on how the web architecture is uh, defined so uh, that's about it I uh, don't have any uh, other thing to discuss uh, in this video but of course in the future one we'll come back and uh, probably like you know uh, touch base on some other basics of the application or maybe uh, dig into some uh, other burp uh, tool set uh, or burp or any other wasp is also one of the uh, proxy which has been asked by many people to get a demo on so probably we can do that as well but uh, give me give me, uh, like you know give me your suggestion right in the comments what else you guys would like to learn and i'll try my best to cover those uh, that's it from my side uh, thank you so much for your time and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content I'll see you guys next week bye